An island floats in the calm waters of the Seto Inland Sea in the western part of Japan. On its shore is the Itsukushima Shrine, a fine example of traditional Japanese religious architecture. History tells us that the shrine was founded towards the end of the 6th century. The present day shrine dates to the beginning of the 12th century, when the ruler of the time built it as we see it today. It's constructed on platforms supported by stilts, a reflection of the imperial palace culture which was in fashion at the time. The gently sloping roofs are thatched with the bark of the Japanese cypress known as the sun tree. Traditional Japanese architecture, noted for its extensive use of wood, has created an elegant art form which is based on various combinations of interlocking timbers. The beauty of the wooden structure that supports the roof is one of the characteristics of traditional Japanese buildings. The Itsukushima Shrine consists of more than 20 separate buildings. Of these, the main hall and the east and west galleries have all been declared national treasures. In many regions of Japan, there still exist castles built in medieval times when warriors were fighting for control of the country. One of them is Himeji Castle, famous for its outstandingly beautiful construction. The central citadel is seven stories high, with its top 46 meters above the foundations of the stone walls. Imeji Castle was built 400 years ago and its construction took eight years to complete. Although made of wood, the walls are covered with a thick layer of white plaster to defend the castle from enemy attack as well as fire. The most important part of the castle is the central citadel with its tiled roof. Here too, a beautiful wooden structure can be seen under the eaves. Inside the central citadel, massive wooden pillars and beams interlock with each other to provide support for the tall structure. The staircase, windows and shutters are also all made of wood. When the shutters are closed, it becomes very dark inside. This was to confuse any hostile intruders. This is the main wooden pillar that supports the entire building. It's by far the thickest single piece of timber in the castle and interlocks with overhead joists. The strong design and structure of castles like this one served as models for succeeding generations of builders. In the middle of Japan's main island is the Toshogu Shrine, surrounded by a dense cedar forest. The Toshogu Shrine was built 380 years ago and it's a fine example of an architectural fusion of shrine and temple. The main entrance to the compound is through the very ornate Yome Mon or Yome Gate. The gate is 11 meters high and decorated with more than 500 carvings. The abundant decorations painted in red, green, blue, black, white and gold make the gate an extremely colorful structure. Because of its incredible ornamentation, the Yome Mon is considered to be the culmination of the art of its time and the structure has been designated a national treasure. The delightful carvings which adorn the buildings in the shrine's precincts are in total harmony with the surroundings. The main hall itself is almost totally covered with carved decorations. The paintings on the ceiling give a sumptuous feeling to the entire building. The interior of the main hall follows the so-called Shoin style of construction, where a large space is divided into many rooms. Modern Japanese architecture derives from this style. Magnificent carvings also decorate the walls of the main hall. 
Now let's take a look at the history of Japanese wooden architecture and examine how it developed. The use of timber for construction in Japan began with the building of ancient temples and residences of the nobility. This is the Horyuji Temple in the city of Nara, once the capital of Japan. Designated a national treasure, the temple's golden hall is the oldest wooden building in the world. It was built in the 7th century. Construction of the building is based on a complex design of interlocking timbers, and the hall has a tiled roof. This style is believed to have been introduced to Japan from China. The tiles are embossed with reliefs depicting the Chinese plants that were the symbols of Buddhism. The Byoto Inn Temple is situated on the outskirts of Kyoto, another ancient capital of Japan. It was built 950 years ago and is considered to be the high point of the architectural elegance of the period. Originally it was a villa for a nobleman and his family. This is a typical example of the ancient architectural style known as Shindenzukuri, or palace style, characterized by the use of platforms. The paneled walls create a vast interior space which can be divided by screens to create temporary rooms. The Byodo Inn Temple has survived the many wars which have been fought in the surrounding area, and we see it today exactly as it was when originally built. The characteristic feature of palace style is that rooms such as reception rooms, bedrooms and the dining hall are located in separate buildings. They are connected to the main hall by covered corridors. By medieval times, around the beginning of the 15th century, the Japanese began to use partitions to create several permanent rooms inside a building. This building was constructed about 400 years ago in Kyoto. The elegant lines of the architecture deserve admiration and it's considered to be a masterpiece of the time. It's been designated a national treasure. The advantage of building with wood is that different external appearances can be created simply by changing the method of interlocking the timbers. This building, located in the midst of beautiful gardens, demonstrates many of the features that a traditional Japanese wooden building should have. A large study is located at the center of the building and this arrangement is known as Shoin style. The style was developed from the ancient palace style of construction and by this time the interior of the building was divided into rooms. The architectural characteristics include painted sliding screens called Fusuma and Shoji which let light into the room. There's also an alcove, a sort of small room set at a slightly higher level. The floors are covered with tatami mats, a feature unique to Japanese houses. The Katsura Imperial Villa was built 380 years ago as a suburban residence for the Imperial family. This building is also in Shoin style and the brilliant white shoji that separate it from the outer world create a beautiful contrast to the green of the garden. Outside the shoji are wooden shutters which stop driving rain from penetrating the rooms. Just inside the shoji partitions is a wooden floored corridor. When the sliding partitions are opened, they reveal a panoramic view through to the garden. The garden plays an important part in the shoin style of construction. A Japanese garden is laid out so that it reflects the atmosphere of the countryside. It exists independently of the building and yet it enhances the image of the whole area, including the building. So how have the features of traditional Japanese architecture been implemented in modern buildings? This interlocking wooden structure under the eaves is just one beautiful reminder of the past.
The floors are covered with tatami mats and the rooms are partitioned by the sliding screens known as fusuma. The main pillar that supports the entire structure of the house has become thicker. This one measures about 30 centimeters along each side. There are shoji which let in light and fusuma sliding partitions. This is the traditional Shoin style of construction and it's still used today. The reception room has a tokonoma or alcove which is set at a slightly higher level than the rest of the room. The size of tatami mats varies with the region. On average they measure 180 centimeters by 90 centimeters. The tatami mat base is made from compressed straw. The top of this base is covered with a mat of woven rushes. The woven rush mat is fastened in place with long metal skewers. Once the length of the mat has been determined, the craftsman then works on the width. Once the mat has been made to size, the surplus rushes are trimmed off. The woven rush mat is then sewn to the straw base. The thread is made of hemp and is thick and strong. This craftsman is sewing the mat the traditional way and his skills have been perfected after years of experience. The compressed straw base is quite dense and it's not so easy to sew by hand. When the woven rush mat has been sewn to the base, the side of the tatami mat is covered with a strip of fabric. This too is sewn to the base. In the past, all tatami mats were sewn by hand. Today, however, most production is done by machine. It takes more than half an hour to sew a mat by hand. A machine does the same job in a few minutes. There are two types of machine used for sewing tatami mats. One machine sews lengthways and the other does the ends. The size of a Japanese room is traditionally measured by the number of tatami mats it contains. Let's see how a fusuma sliding partition is made. First of all, the paper for the underlining is prepared. The craftsman uses a weak solution of glue to prepare the underlining for cutting. Japanese paper is used for the underlining. The paper absorbs the moisture from the glue and after it's been scored, it can be gently pulled apart. The glue is carefully applied to the section of paper that will be stuck to the wooden frame. The sheet of prepared paper is then brushed onto the frame. 
It takes great skill to apply the glue correctly, as both the glue and the way the underlining is applied will affect the final appearance of the top layer of paper. Now it's time for the top layer of paper to be applied and for this a much thicker glue is used. The glue is spread all over the sheet of paper so that it will strengthen the underlining and also hold the top layer down evenly. The top layer is made from one sheet of paper. If it's just slightly out of alignment, the whole panel will be affected and look odd. The paper is carefully brushed onto the underlining and any air bubbles worked out so as not to cause an uneven surface. When the paper is in place, a hole is cut for the handle. This enables the sliding screen to be opened and closed easily. Nowadays, printed Japanese paper is used to make fusuma sliding partitions. In the past, it was quite common to decorate the panels by painting, and some examples of fusuma panel paintings have been designated national treasures. Now let's see how a shoji panel is made. A shoji panel is made from a wooden frame covered with white Japanese paper. The glue is applied only to the wooden frame. The craftsman carefully attaches the sheet of paper to the frame where it absorbs the moisture from the glue. Once the paper dries, the surface of the shoji becomes as tight as a drum. The tradition of building houses with wooden materials survives in today's Japan. The old idea of supporting pillars and interlocking timbers is evident in the construction of this modern residence. The thick joist bears all the load of the upper structure. Various specialist joints are used to interlock the timbers. Wood can be fixed more strongly this traditional way than by using nails or screws. Recently, the construction of tall buildings using steel and concrete has been on the increase in Japan. The apartments built inside these modern buildings usually have rooms made to a western design, but it's still very common to have at least one room built in a traditional Japanese style. So it seems the concept of traditional Japanese architecture lives on, even in mighty modern tower blocks made of concrete, steel and glass. <laughs> 